Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Akash. This is another week of MedGeek's case studies. I want to do something differently this week. So instead of doing a case study like we usually do every week, uh, I want to go through a disease process and uh, kind of take you through that. So today we'll be talking about one of the most common uh, infectious diseases of all time, and that's influenza. You know, given that this is going to be uh, the season starting for influenza, I've already been starting to see uh, influx of influenza patients. So I thought, you know, this would be a great time to start talking about this. So as you guys know, flu is a contagious disease. It's a respiratory illness caused by influenza virus, uh, commonly by four types, A, B, C, and D. A and B will be the most common types that you'll encounter, C and D very rarely. These viruses are transmitted aerosolized, so sneezing and coughing are the most common ways of transmission, which is why this is one of the most common uh, infectious diseases out there. So signs and symptoms, as you guys might know, are uh, very similar to upper respiratory infection. They're pretty vague, nothing specific to the disease process itself. Uh, so you'll encounter low-grade fever because it's a virus, uh, chills, nausea, vomiting, arthralgias, myalgias. In terms of diagnosing, uh, rapid influenza test is one of the most common ones out there. However, this will only confirm diagnosis if, it's, if the symptoms have been present for less than two days. Um, if it's been more than two days, it's, it's kind of hard to detect that. Another test that's been becoming more prevalent is the PCR. Uh, and this uh, test for the virus's RNA, making it more accurate. Um, but that given, you know, the best way to diagnose influenza is clinical. This is a clinical diagnosis. You can get the PCR test, you can get the rapid influenza test, but those are to confirm your diagnosis. Um, your suspicions should be with um, clinical basis. In terms of treatment, like you guys know, this is a virus, so it will run its own course. However, there are complications, so uh, we do want to prevent um, it running its own course. So um, if the symptoms have been less than two days, you can give Xanamivir, Osaltamivir, Ianamivir, Paramivir. Those are the four drugs that you can give if the symptoms have been less than two days. If more than two days, these drugs um, are essentially useless, and the best course of action from that standpoint will be uh, symptomatic treatment. So treat the fever, treat the chills, uh, treat any coughing, any nausea, vomiting, and so on and so forth. But what I want to center this entire talk around is prevention um, and complications. So uh, in terms of prevention, every year it approximately affects three to five million people around the world. And this is because the complications of influenza are pretty risky. Uh, it might not be for you or I, who are healthy individuals, but for people who are at risk, people who are elderly, over 65, people under five years of age, people who are immunocompromised, pregnant women, these are the people who are at high risk. People with pulmonary comorbidities. And so that given, you know, these people can uh, have pneumonia, myocarditis, sepsis, renal failure. So these are some of the complications. They're very severe complications for a very benign and common uh, disease process. So we have to be careful about uh, prevention in, in these patients. Because of this, not only should we immunize people at high risk for influenza, we should immunize everybody. And the reason being is herd immunity, right? So I'll be fine, you'll be fine if we get the influenza because we're healthy young individuals. However, if we cough on somebody, you know, especially being in New York City where everybody's in such close quarters or any city for that matter, you're posing risks to other people who are not immunized and who are at high risk. So you'll be fine, but the lady you cough on uh, in the subway or in the trains um, who's 85 years old won't be fine because she will develop the complications that you won't or I won't. So this is why prevention is so important uh, for common 
infectious diseases like influenza. At this point, CDC recommends everyone over the age of six months to have uh, influenza vaccination. And this is something important too. This is why I also want to uh, surround this talk around patient education because at the end of the day, we're the last people left as clinicians uh, to convince our patients to have any kind of immunization. You know, so the way I kind of educate my patient is divided into two things because there's a lot of misconceptions on what the influenza is and the influenza virus. So I break it down into two things, influenza, the disease, and influenza vaccination. So this is what I tell my patients about the influenza disease. You know, first of all, it's a virus, not a bacteria. And these viruses have a high mutation rate. So they evolve every single year, which is why we need the flu vaccine every single year. That given the epidemiologists, you know, at CDC, do the best job they can to predict what strain of flu will be more prevalent this year versus the next year versus last year. And most of the times, they're pretty accurate. So the only difference was last year, the coverage was pretty minimal for the flu vaccine, which is why a lot of people got the flu. And now the perception is that because they have the flu vaccination and they still got the flu, there should be no point of getting the flu vaccination again this year, which is not true. So this is something that you have to tell your patients that sometimes the coverage isn't as best as predicted. It's just that it didn't protect you for that specific strain. It protected you against other strains, not just the most prevalent strain for that season. And in terms of the vaccination, uh, you know, all the anti-vaxxers out there can hate on the flu vaccination all that they want. You know, you guys are entitled to your opinions. I'm entitled to my facts. The flu vaccination has an inactive virus, which means it's a dead virus. It cannot affect you. The reason most people become sick or get the flu right after getting the flu vaccination is because their immune system is responding to the vaccination, which means their immune system is working. The sign of the vaccination working. This is your immune system memorizing what the flu strain is this season. So in case it gets attacked, it remembers and it can fight off. So patients, when they say, I'm getting, I get sick after the flu vaccination is absolutely not true. It's just your immune system response to the vaccination itself. And this is something you have to tell your patients so they're aware of this uh, and they don't freak out when they do get uh, some kind of immune response after the vaccination. And again, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about you. It's not about the patient. It's about protecting people who are at high risk. It's all about herd immunity. Immunize as many people as possible so less people who are at risk can get infected. You know, I understand, yes, the influenza vaccine is can give you the Guillain-Barre syndrome, but the chances of you getting Guillain-Barre syndrome from a flu vaccine are one in a million. One in a million people who get the flu vaccine get Guillain-Barre syndrome. Funny enough, the chances of you getting Guillain-Barre syndrome by getting influenza itself, one in 10,000. So the higher chances, much higher chances of you getting Guillain-Barre syndrome from the flu itself than the flu vaccination. And that's something you can tell your patients too, um, to, to help them, guide them towards the vaccination. It's all about the facts. You can't rely on any people's opinions. You can't rely on anecdotes. You have to present the facts as a clinician as much as possible to convince your patients to get the vaccination. You know, complications like we said, uh, before pneumonia is one of the most common ones um, and a lot of older people die from complications of influenza like pneumonia because they can't their body can't handle it um, they can also lead to sepsis renal failure myocarditis 
Uh, these are some, most, some of the most common complications from influenza itself. And these are serious because CDC approximates that 80,000 people per year die from influenza in the United States alone every year. Think about it. 80,000 people die from the flu or its complications in one year every year in the United States. That's insanity. That's something that could be prevented every single year. And this is why I think it's important, right? Like flu is serious. And we as clinicians are essentially the last measure that any of the patients have to convince them to get the flu vaccination. Most patients are unaware of the risks. Most patients are unaware of the disease process itself. And that's fine. But it's our job to educate them on how this disease process works on how this, what the symptoms are, on what the complications are, who it affects, and what the vaccination can do to them and the people around them. But I get it though, you know, educating patients, every single patient in primary care, urgent care, emergency room, it takes two to three minutes out of your, your, your life. And those two, three minutes, honestly, are very critical. Um, because you need those two, three minutes to do your own things, to see another patient, but those two to three minutes that you can use to convince the patient to get the flu vaccination might put a dent on 80,000 deaths per, per year in the United States. Just a thought out there. You know, if we as clinicians can convince 20 to 30% of our patients taking the two, three, two to three minutes out of our lives to convince them, who knows what it might do to the annual influenza deaths around the world that's just a thought uh that is it guys today um i hope you enjoyed this remember to get vaccinated happy flu season everybody i'm curious to know how you guys uh treat your patients and how you guys convince your patients to get the flu vaccinations so comment below um and let me know and as always subscribe so you can follow us next week Okay, guys, take care. We'll see you next week. Bye.